My name is Bilan Adin and I'm a smiling American. My family and I moved to the U.S. in 1995. We came from London and moved to Northern Virginia, Fairfax. My father lived in Fairfax, Virginia and uh, we moved to the U.S. so that we could be reunited with him. I work at a small nonprofit organization called Somali Youth and Family Club. Hosting this dinner is important to me because I wanted my neighbors, my colleagues, and even strangers to come into my home and eat with my family and see what it's like to break bread with a Muslim. Right now, our country is divided and it's mostly because of isolation. We have been placed in compartments and the only way to break those barriers is to break bread together. I think once we eat together we will be able to address some of the um, internal biases that we've had about each other and have an honest conversation and maybe come to a common ground and realize that we have a lot more in common than we um, thought otherwise. You know, I love cooking, I love, um, you know, uh, being in the service industry, having to converse with people from different backgrounds, you know, and, you know, able to, you know, share this. Uh, this is, you know, this makes life interesting for me, and uh, I love what I do. And I'm being happy to You said you love uh, cooking, but did you go to school for? Um, I did, actually. Uh, um, right after I got into, I'm actually, I became a restaurant owner before I was a chef. Like right and for profession. Um, so around 2003, I went back to school to Le Cordon Bleu, which is like uh, uh, one of the top schools for culinary schools in Minnesota. And um, yeah, I did uh, quite well. But you know, they only taught me how to um, do a hold the knife. Hold the knife. <laughs> don't cut your knife. You know, I mean, cross contamination. This, but most of my dishes are basically self-taught. So things, you know, um, you know, they give you the basics and to start up. And then. I'm so grateful to Jamal for. Um, for cooking this amazing meal and I just wanted to give support to this cause because I, I also believe in it and I went um, I wanted to support them in any capacity um, my mother and I have been doing um, nonprofit work for quite some time in the Seattle area um, helping refugee and immigrant families young and beautiful beautiful people that are all sitting here are the kind of people that are going to be the future leaders of this country. Uh, we have hopes. We, we really do have hopes in all of you. And so I think with <clears throat> this election, it was a stark sort of realization that, that we do have a long way to go still, and that there, there's always going to be an element of our politics that finds it advantageous to other people. Some people that I know, they say, who are uh, 
probably most of them they are good people they ask me why they don't why the Muslims don't speak out and I ask them do you listen do you listen the radios or the TVs of Muslim countries they have radios they have newspapers they have media the Muslims who are living here in the United States their voice is limited yeah. There's people that are um, intolerant, so different from Judy yeah. and probably the people around this table. And I've done a lot of thinking about that. Um, you know, how do you change somebody that is so closed? Um, and so I think you can do that in really small ways. Um, and I think it's going to take a long time. But what what can I do too? Right? It's kind of what you were speaking to. So, you know, if you hear somebody say something, take that opportunity to to say something, you know, and, and seize those opportunities. Um, I think that living in the city that we live in, there's a lot of different causes and a lot of things that I felt more comfortable speaking up um, against, or I see that moment pass and I get frustrated with myself. Um, so I think it's just seizing those opportunities when somebody says something. And I know I've been on the recipient end of that too, where I've messed up um, and had someone talk to me about that. And that's something that really stood with me and I feel like if that's something that changed me I can change somebody else so mm -hmm. I think that's something that's really seizing those opportunities um, it's not an easy thing to do but you have to be really conscious and present in those moments but um, mm. that's some a small thing that I think we can do when you say something wrong politically can affect you may silent when some friend or your neighbor or say something bad or you know you can tolerate it. It's not affecting the whole society or the whole country. But when we see something which can affect uh, the future of our society, our country, our progress, we have to speak. I don't think it's all on, you know, what could the Muslims do to make other people comfortable. It's, it's reciprocal. Just even people talking to people is really important um, because it is scary. I'm a person of privilege and I'm scared by it too. But it's very humbling to see you guys stepping up and I think that puts more, I think we all need to step up um, because especially those of us that have seen this happen before in history. The Somali culture says that either if you want to know people either eat with them or go a long journey with them on the road uh, that is the time that you understand who they are and I'm so happy that you choose like eat with them because it's hard to take all people <laughs> 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 So we are hoping to continue these smaller gatherings that are so cozy that people can laugh, can share, can uh, feel, and find out that there is no difference between the Muslim <laughs> and between the Christian or the Jew or this or that. All religions tell good things. All religions are friendly. All religions have no difference in us, all of us, being human, and our color and our uh, diversity is our beauty. God had made, you know, has made the flowers so colorful and beautiful to show his power and exercise in what he can do in nature. And we are that part of the nature that he created. Islam asks for peace. Islam asks us for, cares about the neighborhood. Our Prophet wasallam, peace be upon him, uh, in one of his you know, verses he says that Gabriel, which is the angel Gabriel, which brings the message, he says like, Gabriel never stop advising me about my neighbors. To the point that I thought that my neighbors are going to inherit me like my neighbors are my children. So this is the kind of Islam that 
we know. I've had a little bit more of a learning experience over the last two years on how to be mindful of my privilege and all of that and acknowledge the limitations of my perspective. Um, working with Hamdi has taken that to a whole other level. Um, Hamdi serves, and we spoke about this at the beginning of the night, the way Hamdi can serve as a mirror in a lot of ways. Um, Hamdi is all that I think America thinks of itself as. Uh, brave, adventurous, inspiring, fearless, big-hearted. Um, Thank you. <laughs> and and I, think, I think if you approach this issue of immigration and um, the melting pot that is America, I think if you approach it from a perspective of fear, you're going to, to lose out on everything that we can be as humans, which is loving passionate and good. My dad is Iranian, so there are Muslims in my family. He's not Muslim and I'm not Muslim, but um, being around Muslims was not a foreign thing for me. Um, so I, I felt comfortable. I was curious and I guess I would describe myself as an open person. Um, but I think it's particularly timely for me to be working with Somali youth um, right now because I'm learning a lot about the Somali culture and more about Islam than I knew before. Um, and I'm able to share some of those things with my friends and family. And I think that that's important, particularly as a, a white person or a white appearing person, um, to, uh, to take some of the burden off of, of Muslims and uh, minority groups in general, and I know that the attempt of this of this organization, Eat with Muslims, is to sort of humanize Muslims, right? But I don't think that burden should just be on Muslim people to do. Um, so me becoming more informed has, I think, allowed me to also share some of the the things that are humanizing of, about Muslims to demonstrate that we are all people and have way more in common than uh, than are different. Yeah. Um, so it's, I mean, aside from meeting really awesome people and being connected to a, a different community than I have been before, I've also just learned a lot and I think uh, it's been beneficial to helping further conversations in my personal life too. Concepts that I've already created in my head about who Muslims are and what they believe uh, from how I've passively, or, you know, absorbed ideas. Um, so I'm very happy to listen a lot tonight while eating. Thank you very much for this opportunity. And I think we all here are know somebody who is less open than us, who we could invite to one of these. And you all know somebody, a friend or a family, who you could invite to talk to that person, and I think those are great ways to, to continue this um, so that we're all listening when, uh, when we talk to each other. It was really amazing to host Eat With Muslims. I was so grateful to have all of our guests uh, come and uh, break bread with each other. I also am very grateful to have Jamal Hashi be our featured chef. Uh, he made an amazing Somali uh, cuisine, and I'm glad that everybody enjoyed it. It's very powerful when somebody realizes, like if they're just out of ignorance saying <laughs> something against Muslims, and then, the, and then somebody who they already know, already like, they're close to go, I'm a Muslim, I've been your friend for five years. Like, why are you saying these things? You're not and, throwing me away. Yeah. <laughs> and it completely, I think it blows their mind. <laughs> and it is very powerful, and it's just something that, like when people find out, oh, their favorite celebrity is an American. It's actually Canadian or something like that. They go, "Oh my God!" And, you know, I, I had all of these like assumptions about the world, and they're not right. And it's, I think, things like that that happen are are really powerful. Love grows. It has to grow. Uh, compassion has to grow as well. Love grows, huh? I know that.